Um, real quick, before we get started, I just wanted to, um, we're not done, but I want to thank all of our scouts and, and coaches. You guys have done, put a lot of work in. Coaches have um, gone on some privates and pro days and, and Zooming these guys after hours. Some of them are still in school. So uh, a lot of time these guys have put into it. Our scouts, you know, this whole fall, uh, getting our board to where it's at. It's not 100% final, but we're getting, we're getting pretty close. Uh, and then our, our medical team, just all the, we had our medical meeting last night with the docs and, and, and our trainers uh, and all those guys that are putting a lot of work uh, to get us the, the data of any medical concerns that we have on these guys, um, guys that may need a surgery if you draft them or uh, may need maintenance, you know, from A to Z. Um, so again, I just want to thank all those guys and uh, appreciate everyone's work. Who? Yeah, you tell me. Uh, hey, look, this is, uh, it's one of those years, though, where it feels like, I guess you can say it every year, but it really feels like you could go in the five different places at 27. Is that the sense you're getting from the research you're doing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we haven't done the mocks yet, but, um, you know, I've peaked at a few just to, you know, our people have com compiled just seeing what names are constantly showing up above us and what names are showing up around us across the board. Um, and again, we'll, we'll get a full look at that through our exercise. But yeah, uh, I think 27 feels like a long way to figuring out who's going to be available. And you know, it's hard to say which side of the ball. Can you give us a roundabout, Brandon, of how many maybe first round grades you might have in this class compared to what you normally have? I know generally there's never 32. It's 20 to 25 somewhere there. Yeah, it's um, at the end I will, but it's not great. Gotcha. Having drafted in the uh, first round since Josh Allen, is there a strong possibility that you can go offense at 27? Uh, I, I would. It's kind of what I answered to Sal here a second ago, Mookie. It's um, we're going to take the best player. We really are. There's there's, there's going to be a good player there, um, and we're going to take the best player. You know, I know. Everyone's going to have their, their mock guesses to say this is what the Bills need. And, and I know, listen, fans come out to watch offense probably more than they want to watch defense. So, um, and if there's the, the right player there, for sure we would do it. Uh, I'm usually not going into a draft saying, hey, let's hit one side of the ball or the other. I'm not trying to. Um, you know, so we'll just, you know, we'll see how the board falls. Um, and, and, you know, we're going to set the board, and it'll kind of tell us what, what we need to do. Brandon, given that you alluded to already, you don't have a lot of the, the first round grades on players uh, as far as you go, uh, as far as you're concerned. The fact that you only have six picks overall, and you like picks, and you have holes to fill, how much how much are you leaning towards turning back and adding picks? Yeah, I mean, I think that's we would definitely be open to that if, especially if it falls in a way where our, our first round's wiped out and, you know, starts getting well into your second round and you're like, oh, man, yeah, we, we'd we be best to move back. But we'll see. Everybody's boards are different, too. You could talk to another team and they could say, man, we love what's available in the first for our team, for what we're doing. Um, but I, I'll just, again, when it starts getting, you know, we're 27, it starts getting to pick 20, you know, five, six, seven picks out, I think we'll start to know whether we think there's going to be someone there that we should try and stay for, move up for, or, as you suggested, uh, move back and, and, and gain more picks. Or is it more likely, given that you don't have a lot of draft capital and assets, yeah. to move back and move up unless there's somebody that you really Yeah, I mean, tell me who's coming off the board, and I'll tell you. If I was in Vegas right now, Putting money down, I would say if we were going to do anything, it'd be more likely to go back than go up. Um, but listen, yeah. you're, you're talking to a guy who gets antsy at times and goes up and gets guys. So Vegas probably would still <laughs> go against what I just suggested would and, happen. And with a wider, seemingly wider range of opinion on the prospects in this class as a whole, do you see that as an opportunity? Because more teams will have different opinions on players than you, maybe than normal, or is that something to be wary of because of the unpredictability that that offers? Yeah, I think, um, Chris, you got to go in and look for the players that you like that fit what you do. 
um, and fit. You, you've got defined roles if you take them. Hey, this guy's going to come in. He's going to compete to start with player X, or he's going to be a really good backup for us year one, maybe help us on special teams. But we think year two, he's a replacement for someone who's got an expiring contract. So, um, you know, every year it seems like there's varying opinions. I mean, there's guys that we'll have in the fourth round that go in the first. They're better fits for someone else, maybe as a skill set, maybe there's some medical concerns, maybe personality. We just, it's not the type of person that we want to deal with. So um, we kind of set the board just for us and go. But no, I think, I think as the draft goes down, it's, it starts getting, there's, there's some depth. It's just not as high. It's, it's, it's more a little bit later. Do you feel like, I mean, obviously you address, you made a lot of moves, uh, signed a lot of people. Yeah. Um, if the draft goes badly at a position, like there's a run in the first round and the second round, do you feel like you have covered your spaces to the point where you don't absolutely have to pick position X? Yeah, I feel I feel we've done a pretty good job of filling enough of the holes, whether it's starters or good backups to where we maybe we don't have a sheer starter, but we got, you know, several people to compete, two, three, um, you know, again, is it perfect? No, but um, I think there's enough guys that we could go line up and play football right now would be my answer, Mark, and, and hopefully we'll add some more competition and depth. You talked about, week. I'm sorry, Brandon, no, you're good. Uh, picking guys who, and then maybe you project them in year two and what they can do. When you have guys that you picked who maybe didn't get as many snaps in the offense or the defense last year, say Bernard or Shakir or whoever it happens to be, when you're trying to project them for this year, how much of that is based on the tape that they actually played and then maybe conversation with the coaches, going looking back at other things where you're saying this is a young guy going in that year two and what we project him into doing this year for you. That's exactly the conversation we have is um, what do we see year one? Um, what, does, what, do, what do we need to see from him in year two? And do we think it's there or do we say, hey, and if, 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 if we still think the player needs to – um, improve on the one area why he didn't get as much playing time last year. We've communicated that to the player and said, hey, this is what we want you to work on this offseason. Come back and show us this. Um, so they would, you know, these, these young guys are still going to have to come back and compete. But uh, some of the names you mentioned, uh, we are excited about what they will potentially provide, you know, coming up year two. How does these, uh, these, these, these workouts here in the next couple of weeks, how does that help you win that draft process? You talking about our guys? Yes. Yeah, not not a lot. Um, it, you're not you're not playing football. It's just working out. So we kind of are more going off. They they just have to. We have an idea of what we think they will be in year two. You know, showing up here, you know, shows hey they're ready to roll, and you and you're able to see what kind of shape they're in and what they've been doing, but nothing from a football skill set. Brandon, we just saw that. We got a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys like one year contracts and some guys that are expiring. Contracts going into 24. So, could you look at it? Is there a position area that you think you need to draft this year because you've got to get a guy in, in for a full year contract at a position where you've got a bunch of one year or expiring contracts? Yeah, I mean, the one position that we don't have a lot on the future is D tackle. We, we don't uh, at this point. You know, Ed's going into his last year, Daquan's going into his last year, Jordan was a one year deal. Tim Settle um, last year. So um, if you were, you know, poking at something that, you know, the Bills would need to keep an eye on, that would probably be where you'd start. Is that, is that, I mean, Jordan's two years, but yeah. he's got draft, he's got Iris fighting, Mars future. Is that area you, you yeah, I think I think that one um, we'll see uh, for sure. And we, again, we'll if if there's a guy that we can add, um, we definitely would. But um, we feel good with with Jordan, Micah, adding Taylor in. Um, Demar, you know, is is prepared to come back and 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 play. And and we got some other guys there. So yeah, if there was the right player, we'd take him. Though Sal, it's not that we're saying. Boxes check. We're ready to roll. Uh, Brandon, just to follow follow up on what Sal just asked about tomorrow. You say he's preparing to play. Where are you guys at in that stage? If you can give us an update on maybe what the medical is telling you and where that's going, and also where Bob Miller is in his rehab. 
Yeah, we'll start with DeMar, Sal. So um, DeMar saw his last specialist uh, on Friday. Um, so he's he saw when, – when, long and short of it, when he left Cincinnati, came here, was Buffalo General, he saw a couple of specialists here uh, in Buffalo. And then since then, he's seen three additional specialists most recently on Friday, and you know they're all in, a, in agreement. It's not two to one or three to one or anything like that. They're all in lockstep uh, of what this was, and that he is cleared, resumed full activities, just like anyone else who was coming back from an injury or whatever. So he's he's fully cleared. He's here, and he is of the mindset. He's in a great headspace to uh, come back and and uh, make his return. Then Vaughn, please. Um, he is working out, yes. Y yes, yes. Uh, Vaughn, I'm and sorry. Vaughn, I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. And Vaughn, um, saw Vaughn yesterday. Uh, didn't get to talk to him long, but going to follow up with him this week. But he, he looks good. Um, you know, I have not asked the trainers specifically where he's at, like, on this day. But um, we'll get a good idea this week uh, of where he's at. And no timetables at this point, even if I knew specifically before I walked in here exactly where he's at. But I know he's um, he's been rehabbing hard. Everything's gone as planned. And, you know, we'll we'll see. I don't think there's going to be a timeline until we get to training camp of, you know, is he ready at camp or is he start on pup and, and kind of take it from there. One more, sorry, one more clarification on DeMar. Is there anything internally that's still a little piece off in terms of he cleared? Because I know it was like all the outside specialists first and then you guys No, this is one of those things that's uh, it's not our expertise, you know, our medical team that we have on staff for, for what his, his situation was. So we basically are following the lead of them. If they say he's cleared, and but we did, this is something, it's not new. I mean, it's not, uh, it is new. It's not something we're used to. So it's one of those where Nate Bresky went, you know, with him on all his trips, just to hear, make sure we're hearing exactly. And, and then those findings were also communicated back to our medical doctors as well. So he's clear as far as you're concerned? He is clear. Great. Just one more on DeMar. Well, I'm sorry, just that's from a physical health perspective, but I think there's also the mental yep. health component that obviously in January, that was talked about a lot with like the players and everyone here, but making sure that DeMar's okay in that perspective, I guess that how important is that? And obviously that's something that like, yeah, that's a huge part. Like anything, you're, you know, anytime you're coming back from any injury, much less uh, something that was life threatening. So yes, um, that's that's always an ongoing type thing, and, and we will we'll put all the resources that he needs, you know, for that. Brandon has um, said on days before for I know it's voluntary for um, these workouts, and as a part of that question is, you said. <coughs> Um, what I'll say is, Matt, he's, um, he was not here yesterday. I'm not sure about today. I uh, have not seen him or heard that he's here. Um, you know, I'll keep, you know, our contact and communication. I'll keep that, you know, between us. Yeah, I mean, I think we got some, you know, we got some young guys that have waited their turn and their opportunity. You know, start with Tyrell Dotson's been here for a while in our system, knows it, and I think he filled in ab admirably, you know, when Tremaine missed time, and so I think he'll have that opportunity. Um, the two guys we drafted last year in, in Bernard and Spectre have, you know, Spectre's been here the whole off season. You know, Tyrell just got back, but uh, those guys, young players that. You know, have good upside, and we'll, and we'll have that opportunity. And then, you know, we bring back an AJ Klein as well, who's who came in, and and you guys are familiar with AJ and and our history with him. So, I think between all those guys, we feel good that that we have that covered. Brandon, how often would you say that it happens where you reach into a round? You know, say you stay at twenty-seven, but you're you're out of first rounders on your board, but you got to take some because you can't move down. Yeah. So you're taking a player with a second round grade there. 
How often would you say that happens versus the inverse happening where maybe you're in the fifth or sixth round and you, have, you get a guy who you maybe had a fourth round grade on? Do those two things maybe balance out in your mind? Because I would imagine it happens quite a, quite a bit. Yeah, spot on, uh, Jay. <coughs> A lot of times, if you're picking at the bottom of the round, a lot of times you're going to be picking in, in your second round. You really are. Um, and then on the inverse of that, at the at the bottom of the round, a lot of times, you know, we had a, you know, I know Shakir and, and Benford, I'd have to think of who all we took, but we had higher grades on them than where we got them. It just, as the draft starts to fall, people start to pick for various needs, guys they had targets, Guys that are going to play a specific role for, for their team, especially when you get on defense, you know, between 3 4 and 4 3, you know, some guys just don't fit, um, you know, a classic 3 4 5 tech doesn't necessarily fit in our defense. And, you know, these pass rushers, you know, you, are they a DPR in our system? These stand up outside backers, you know, Vaughn's one of those guys that's a rarity that can play in a 3 4 or a 4 3. Um, you know, he's probably more three, four, but he's played in, in both and, and, and done well. But you get into those parts of the draft where people are starting to target certain positions, certain types of players. And so you are able to sometimes find guys in the fifth round that you had maybe a late third or, or early fourth on. Following on that, does the philosophy change? <coughs> if you're at the end of the first round and you're going to take somebody who's got a second round grade, are you now searching for somebody who has more upside that maybe would be worth it? Or are you taking the more sure, sure thing because then you know, like, well, maybe we weren't as high on him, but we know he's going to be a good player? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you weigh, you're talking about, all right, now, all right, what, what's this player going to do for us year one? And then you take somebody, you know, a second round player generally is going to be someone who you, okay, if they're not necessarily going to start now but it's someone you think in time will start hopefully by year two, you know, if they're healthy and, and everything's, you know, going as planned. But um, I think you're just looking at, you're talking about upside, uh, fail factor, like what's the difference? It, it, you'd have to give me the two players for me to, does that make, yeah. that make sense, Matt? But yeah, you're, you're going to look at everything. We've generally weighed that out when we build the board to, is this guy at the very top of two or is he, you know, there's a, there can be quite a difference in a in the top of two player versus the, the bottom of two. Whereas when you get into rounds four and five, it starts to diminish on the difference between the top of the fourth and the bottom of the fourth. Brandon, when you're talking about the guys that you have right now at linebacker, and you mentioned evaluating them and trying to see how in the future they might develop and, and fit into the role that you're looking for, is that is that difficult to do right now with you know Dr. Bernard and Spectre guys that haven't maybe played a lot of snaps and, and trying to figure out what they're what they're going to be like? Is that tough to kind of make those uh, I guess maybe guesses or evaluations about a, a role in the future, which also could then determine how you go in the draft there? Yeah, I mean you go off of. Um, you go off of their time here and their experiences. We obviously have more run up with Dotson mm -hmm. than we do with the, the guys who are going into year two. So we, and he's had more playing opportunities to see what does that look like on a short term basis. It's probably going from like a relief pitcher in baseball. He's really good for two innings, but is he good for six, seven, eight innings, you know, to move him to a starting rotation? And, I would say that that's something that these guys will all have to prove. It's one thing to come in and fill in start. It's another to, um, you know, to go play 16, 17 games every week. People are game planning against you, seeing what you do well and what you don't do well and finding your weaknesses, whether it's in the pass game or the run game. So, yeah, th they're all going to have to show that they can do that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to try to give them that opportunity. Does having only six scheduled draft picks factor into how you have to approach some things if you say I really like that guy but I can't really go up not because you might not have the capital because you need more of the draft picks and more guys to contribute to this team yeah I mean it, it's again I think you got to listen to the board a little bit I'm I'm, I'm going to try to be as patient as possible to your point Sal with only six picks it's, it's a little different than walking in here with 10 right uh, for sure so um, in an ideal world 
you know, we're not doing that. But if there's a guy that's we've put a lot of work in and, and there's a lot of conviction on the personnel staff and the coaching staff, we all have a shared vision. You know, we're sitting here in the third round and this, and this guy's got a really good second round grade, then maybe, maybe we move up. You know, I think it's, I think it's easier the further we go down because it doesn't cost as much capital. If we, if we got nuts in, in the first round and tried to make a big leap, that could really, you know, clean out, you know, a good portion of our picks. You've talked to, to that point. Um, what are your overall sentiments on trading future? Trading future picks. Um, I think y you weigh it and see what it is. Um, I'm not going to be fired up about trading future ones. Never have done that. Even when we got Josh, that was really important. Um, and so again, the later in the draft, I'd be okay doing that. I feel like we could find a way to get those back. You know, with maybe trading guys at the end of camp. You know, if you're talking about fifth, sixth, seventh round. But um, you know, I wouldn't be fired up to trade Thursday or Friday picks like the first and second, third. But uh, again, if there's something that could make a huge difference for us, Joe, I'll, I'll listen to anything and look at it, and we'll talk about it. Um, but I, it would have to make a lot of sense. Brandon, you've talked about your natural impatience sometimes. Yeah. What's it, the logistics of the first round being one day? And if you trade out of that spot, what's that like in this day where you don't make a pick that day? Yeah. And then is there a benefit of having the overnight, like say you've gained additional picks, to maybe to refocus, I don't know if it adjusts your board at all, because obviously you'll know more, as opposed to the old days where it used to be you go right into round number two. What, what's What's that like in that moment if you made that move and moved back? Well, I think um, if you went back um, into the second, now you, you're looking at a minimum of two twos. You still got your two, and, and now you've probably added one higher in the round. You, you know, you would sit there. You'd, the end of the day's over. This year there's, what, 31 picks instead of 32. But So you're going to now, now let's look at our board. And it, it does give you some time that you didn't have in the old days when you went the first three rounds on day one. And you're going to start having some conversations. You know, we do these mock drafts. Well, we're guessing on what teams are. Well, now the first round's been answered for us. So a lot of times when we're doing these mock drafts, you're going, all right, if these two guys are on the board, let's, let's argue who would we go with. If these, now you put three or four, it can be a little trickier. So we can do, that's what we would do is, Friday night or Thursday night after it's over, we'd sit there and look at our board and start saying, who do we think we're going to have options at? Let's talk about it now. And then, listen, maybe we come in Friday morning and we turn the tape on again and let's just watch them again one more time and make sure that we all see the same thing and then we're all in lockstep. And again, it may involve, you know, a coach or scout or whatever, all of us kind of just really talking it through. So it, there is clarity, um, but again, it probably would depend on how far back you'd have to go to know what your scenario would be yeah. like. Brandon, 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 have you reached Sorry. maybe a new phase in your building process? You know, you spent focus 2017 to 20, really building this team out. And now, given your cap, now you're in a place where there are cap concerns and you can't retain some of your guys and you do have a core in place. Is this a new phase, perhaps, of where you are with this team and what are the challenges that you face now? Yeah, John, I think um, you're, we're in, we've been in it, I feel like, a little bit, you know, really as Josh's number, you know, gets to where those quarterback numbers are, you know, you're really into looking what is the cap looking like now, next year, and the following year for sure. And so um, we definitely need – uh, we need draft picks on our roster to help us, whether it's backup roles, special teams roles, um, guys to eventual starters. Maybe maybe they don't walk in, you know, if we, if we have depth at, at that position. Um, maybe we're not counting on them this year, but maybe we're saying, hey, we're going to have to let a player walk. We need, we need this guy in 2024 to start. So I think that's where we're at versus in 18 – 19, you're drafting Josh and Tremaine and Harrison Phillips and Taron Johnson, all these guys. It's, we had major holes. It, it wasn't much of a competition.
to roll out there and say go play. I think, again, the cap was being fixed, so we knew that was going to be fine. Now we're dealing with with the ramifications of paying a quarterback at a, at a top level. Brandon, you mentioned, I think, at the combine about not spending a lot of time or resources on the quarterback class because you've got Josh, and that makes sense. But when you talk about the number of first-rounders that you have graded in this class, are you potentially including those quarterbacks who you may not take, or are they just off your board entirely? No, we put them, we give them their value and put them there um, just in case something crazy happens. Uh, we go through the process, not as deep as with Josh's class, but we do go through that process. And, you know, like Joe Brady, you know, met with a decent amount of these guys just to get their mental and, and understanding crazy things happen. We want to be prepared. Okay, there's a guy that we truly gave a first-round grade, and it's, uh, it's the third round, and we're like, man, this guy's pretty good talent. He could be an asset, you know based on, you know, compared to what else is on the board. So we do the process, and yes, we do have, you know, multiple quarterbacks with first-round grades. Considering, Brandon, where some of the wide receiver numbers have gone, would you like to be able to maybe have some cost certainty with Gabe if you could get it done before the season, before the final year of his deal? Or is that just tough, just knowing, you know, you just don't know if the business can happen? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll, we'll you know, right now, Sal, the focus is on the draft yeah. and then just – uh, kind of getting through there, you know. Gabe's going into year four. We got, you know, a few guys that are, that are in that that role of going into that last, you know, that last contract year. And again, I think right now it's more just focus on the draft and and, and see where we, where our roster is at that point, and then start looking, you know, for guys that we would extend, whether it's him or, you know, any of the other guys. You know, you could name a few of them. You know, that's generally something I start looking at in the spring, summer of, and it is planning, where are we going to have some holes? Where do we need to, you know, where do we need to add, you know, a longer term plan? If we can financially, you know, make it work, all that would have to have to happen. Oh, man, uh, that's, that's tough. It's, uh, he's one of those just, it's, such a great kid, such a great family, um, and it's it's exciting to that you know to go from a guy who was fighting for his life to is now um, you know his story hasn't been written. Is you know now it's about the, the comeback, and and so to see that he you know it was all about his health, and it's still it's always going to be about his health, but. Um, to truly, you know, however many months later be talking about he's been fully cleared um, is pretty remarkable. And, um, you know, I'm excited for him and his family at, at where they are on this journey. Thank you.